My enemies are many. My equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. In the land of pharaohs and kings, they said Egypt could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Russia could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to Napoleon Total War. This is just an introductory video. I'm just going to explain what I've done, how I've actually modified the game, what modifications I've actually based this on. There's actually three main mods I've actually based my own modifications on, but I'll talk about those in a moment. Now, some of you may not want to listen to me, and I quite understand that. So you may want to skip on to the next video, which is the video first part of the Coalition, the main campaign that I'll be playing through. Oh, just a word of warning though, this is not stock. As I said, this is a heavily modified Napoleon Total War. It is nothing like stock. So you may want to skip on to the next video when I start the actual campaign, but the battles, both naval and land, do take rather longer than stock, or in fact any modification I've actually played myself. So that's a warning to people who may think this is just stock, it's not stock. I promise you it isn't stock. This is as close to tabletop wargame as you can get without actually delving into the right into the code of the game, which you, you just can't do. Okay, so I'm going to start with the three main mods I've actually installed. First of all, it's Darth Mod Napoleon, as you can probably see at the splash screen there, by Darth Vader and Hustler Total War. Now, for people who don't know what Darth Mod is, it changes units, adds units in. There are several unit packs also that you can install on top of Darth Mod, but they're actually included in this version. This is the Epic Edition version. So on top of what Darth Mod has done, I have gone through every single unit by hand, including land and naval. I've gone through buildings and I've gone through various other mm, I'll say mechanics, including economics. I've also modified the campaign to start in 1798, and it will end in 1842. The end date is the same as Darth Mod's main campaign, the Coalition, but the start date is seven years. Yeah, seven years before Darth Mod Napoleon's actual Coalition campaign starts in 1805. But I'm it back a few more years back to 1798. Okay, that's about the outline of what I've done to Darth Mod, at least for now. I'll explain some further things later on. Okay, the second mod is Sir's Battle Map mod. And this adds over 30 maps for the computer to actually choose from. And that's an expansion on about half a dozen that the stock had the choice. Actual battle, actual battle maps that the that the actual game had to choose from to put you onto during the campaign, and about half a dozen. So over 30 extra 
and it also increased the size of the maps by four times. So four times larger and it also fixes the AI's pathfinding somewhat. The, the AI no longer gets sort of stuck at certain points on a map. Fully tested and it seems to be working fine. And the third the third modification I've included in part, I've looked at Brand Mac mod Brand Mac AI edit mod, which fixes various problems that the AI has when it comes to actually fighting battles both on land and at sea. Mostly online on land though. So I've looked at some parts of that mod and I've included them in this. I've actually edit some edited them by hand. Okay, now the other things that I've done to the game overall is I've increased the unit size by twice. That's a Darth mod uh, switch, software switch on its launcher. So all units now are twice the size. That was causing a problem with the buildings because I did notice certain uh, behaviour from the AI where if the let's say a fortification you have, to have a, a let's say an artillery fort had a, li a limit of 500 men on each wall but once the actual wall had filled up to 50 percent the men would still carry on going to the wall but it wouldn't allow them to use the cannon so i've increased all the walls to 10,000 men that's allowed their increased size in units to actually properly use the fortifications artillery and man the walls properly as well and it seems to work very well I've also, I've also modified ammunition for each unit line infantry for instance gets about 60 rounds which is historically accurate I've also modified certain attributes of certain factions to try and give like um, an historically based character for each faction so you have a positive and you have a negative. So you have a positive on one faction would counter a positive of another faction and a negative would also counter out the other faction's negatives. It's just for balancing but I've basic historically and the research I've actually done on and off is about two years worth of research. Now for example the British line infantry would be equipped with something called the Brown Best, which was a generic nickname for the muskets that they would actually be issued with. It was issued with 36 rounds in a tin, with a further 24 rounds underneath in paper cartridges. Now, certain members of the coalition, especially Russia and Sweden, would buy not only new Brown Besses, but they would also buy second hand. Russia in particular would buy a huge amount of ex-army surplus in other words used very badly worn in some cases along with the tins for ammunition what they did was to counteract this obvious reduction in accuracy and reliability in these muskets that they was buying from the British they would issue a huge amount of ammunition some 200 extra rounds in a large tin so I've added that as an, this is just an example of what I've added in. I've, added, I've done other things to various other factions as well, but this is just an example of Russia. So, in order to counteract that lack of accuracy, I've reduced the accuracy down to, I would say, historically levels. I mean, muskets weren't exactly fantastically accurate in the first place. So, I've increased the amount of ammunition that each, u each unit, each line infantry unit especially takes into battle. In order to counteract this massive amount of ammunition, I've made it so that the units cannot run, because they're carrying all this ammunition with them, so it weighs a ton. This big tin on top of the extra six, like the 60 rounds that they have already in the tin, around the mid-drift, no, around the waist, like a satchel. They would carry this large tin of extra 200 rounds of ammunition. I've not given them 200 rounds. I've given them a, an extra 100 rounds on top of the original 60. So I've given them 160 rounds in total. Just to give the game a bit of a balance. Because I, it seems to work correctly. I've, I've tested it. I've both played the Russians against the French. Then I've played the French against the Russians. And it seems to balance out really well. Okay, so, 
I think that's about covers it. I can't go into everything because it will take several hours. But I've, historic, I've based all of my modifications, all of my tweaks, my munition, accuracy, um, likelihood of a uh, misfire on board ships. Artillery based, especially with the French, the artillery is something that the French specialised in because Napoleon Bonaparte was basically an artilleryman when he first joined the military and he favoured artillery drills. It was, also, it was almost like a key opening move during the Napoleonic campaigns where it was an artillery drill before anything else happened. So that's something else that I've done. That's just an example. I've done to the French, I've increased their, their artillery capability. And that's about it. So I'm going to carry on, I'm going to start the campaign. So if you join me for this, I've added various music in as well, as you can probably hear. The uh, War of 1812 in the background. At least I hope it's in the background. I'm not drowning me out. Um, so I'm going to start the campaign. So we're starting 1798, it's early January. I hope you join me for this. It's going to be good. I'm going to enjoy this. I hope you enjoy watching this as well. Now, just like I said, like I said the word of warning, the, the battle, actually to resolve a battle, whether it's naval and land, it, it's taking a lot longer, so please bear with me if it gets a little bit sort of sticky at certain points, because I'm not going to edit the videos down. They're going to be the full length battles. So, yeah, that's it. If at any point during this playthrough, you like any of the videos, please click like, share. That'd be fantastic if you shared them. I always appreciate people sharing and a subscribe to keep track of the updates to this playlist and the others on my channel. If you want to see a, a, an example of the actual battle mod that I've actually done myself, you can find that on the front page in the one-off section. I believe it's about three, the third section down from the top of the page. But that is a work in progress. It's not, it doesn't, it reflects partly what I've done, but it isn't the full mod. This is the full mod. All right, so, let's get started. So, part one is coming up next, and it's the Coalition. That's the name of the campaign. Early January 1798. 